perhaps feeling just a little bit better or just taking a one last shot at the losers and the haters, the Trump administration is finalizing regulations that could make it harder for people who apply for disability benefits and appeal denials. So now, starting next month, the Social Security Administration will be able to use its own lawyers to hear appeals instead of more independent administrative law judges. So now, that's important because administrative law judges, again, are more independent, uh, and it is, uh, it's basically makes it so that it's easier for people to be able to appeal. See, Social Security, anybody who's had experience with Social Security uh, or, you know, uh, applying for disability or having a family member that has done so knows that this is not an easy process. This is not a simple process. This is a long process with numerous denials for legitimate claims. It is not uncommon for people with legitimate physical or psychological disabilities to be denied multiple times. And this is under the current system, Right. If you have lawyers uh, or, or judges uh, that are inside the agency that don't have this independence, again, they're going to take more of the side of the agency to deny these claims. So now, I know someone, for example, I know this is an anecdote, it doesn't really matter, but um, you know, it, when it comes to the like grand scheme of things, when it comes to evidence, but I want to share this anecdote anyway. So I know somebody, I have a friend uh, whose dad has cancer. And thankfully now it's in remission, but earlier when it was, had just been diagnosed, uh, this person decided to apply for disability, okay? Because they weren't able to work through that, okay? I think it was a full-blown lung cancer, all right? So he couldn't work and he applied for disability and was denied several times. So again, this is a really long process filled with denials, you have to continue to keep proving your case uh, and to continue going through this process uh, for months and months and months, sometimes even years in order to get your claim. So now there's this myth perpetuated by the right where you could just be like, you go into a disability officer or social security office and be like, oh, my, oh, my back kind of hurts. And they just give you like a check on the spot. No, that's not what happens. <laughs> okay. It's not just oh, my pinky toe, uh, I can't work, give me disability. That That's not what happens. That's not a real thing. It's bullshit right-wing framing. And the other framing, of course, is to call it, quote-unquote, welfare, which it's not. And so if you do this change, if this regulation goes through, uh, it's going to make it tougher for people to apply that are legitimately disabled, okay? And so Democrats... Uh, led by uh, Representative Richard Neal. Now, I, I got problems with Richard Neal, but hey, uh, good on him for this. He is against this rule. He said it, that it puts unqualified agency staff in control of deciding appeals hearings and that the Biden administration, once it gets into power, should reverse that policy. So now, if it gets passed and if, it, if the rule gets finalized, that is going to take time. And I'll explain that a little bit later. Uh, people who are disabled don't have that time, they can't really work, and bills don't exactly stop, okay? And, and even if they're able to work, at least part-time, we are in the middle of a pandemic, and if you have a condition that is bad enough to be able to get on disability, well, then you shouldn't be out there to begin with, okay? Uh, and again, there are people that are on disability that are able to work part-time as well uh, with, you know, reasonable accommodation. Uh, that said, not even considering that the loss of income that they're suffering and the lack of government support right now also makes time of the essence. And that money, again, is desperately needed in order to pay things like medical bills related to that disability, rents or mortgages, you know, to be able to buy groceries or buy medicines, things like that. And so, yes, there, there's an issue here. They cannot wait for this. And this is the only this isn't the only change, by the way. The administration actually wants to make before they get themselves out the door. Uh, dozens of other agency rules are now pending at the White House Office of Management and Budget, and the administration could finalize them before Biden takes office in January. And again, that makes it difficult when you finalize that rule. It makes it much harder to get rid of. 
Uh, now, several of the rules target food and disability benefits, while others are aimed, of course, at environmental and worker protections. Because, of course. I mean, <laughs> there it is. Um, in fact, here's Jerry Nadler and Carolyn Maloney saying in a, a letter earlier this week to OMB Director Russell Vought, uh, quote, We have strong concerns that there may be last-minute rollbacks of health, safety, and environmental protections by the outgoing Trump administration. We are concerned that these midnight rules may be rushed through without providing Congress adequate time to review these rules as required by law. So, now, um, two of the pending final rules would tighten eligibility standards for the SNAP program, for getting SNAP benefits, uh, also known as food stamps, there's work requirements and all that. Uh, and last week, the Social Security Administration sent OMB another change that would ramp up some something called continuing disability reviews, which are examinations of whether people receiving disability benefits are still technically disabled. Generally, once you you know, uh, once you are considered to be disabled enough to be able to get benefits, you generally don't get better. Your arm, like, like if you lose an arm, your arm doesn't regrow. I, I guess there are some situations, like for example, psychological issues, where you can get on medications and start to do better, to where you can start getting back to work. But generally, again, once you're disabled, you don't necessarily stop being disabled suddenly. And so that's a, that's a problem. And so now there's good news and there's bad news about this, okay? Um, since we do have Joe Biden that will be winning, uh, or that has already won the election, sorry. Uh, he's already won. He's, he'll be taking power here uh, on January 20th. He'll be able to reverse these rules. And, and, and it's high likelihood that he will. All right. Uh, but here's a good one, right? If the, if the rule is pending when the new president takes office, then the administration can say, we're just going to halt it. it instant. Halt it. Not going to happen. But if the Republicans are able to ram this through, undoing it requires going through the rulemaking process all over again, which takes time, uh, or getting Congress to nullify it, which, in, in which, of course, if you have Republicans that continue to control the Senate, uh, say the you know Democrats do not win in Georgia in those Georgia runoff uh, elections, then Mitch McConnell keeps the Senate, the Republicans keep the Senate, and they don't pass anything. They don't nullify anything. And so, again, it takes time. So now they would have to force, the Democrats would, uh, the chamber to vote on a resolution of disapproval with the hope that they would get two Republicans to support that which basically means, in my estimation, very unlikely that it would happen. Maybe you might get like a, a, a Suzanne Collins or a Lisa Murkowski. I don't necessarily know, uh, but it, the odds are good that there would not be a nullification of some of these rules. And so, mm, mm, not good. Uh, now, to be fair, again, I rag on the Democrats all the time, but in this case, Right now, they seem to be putting up a fight. Um, House Democrats on Monday had asked the GAO to carefully monitor any agency activity during this transition period to make sure new regulations complied with the law and also added riders to an appropriations bill that would disallow the Social Security Administration from implementing its proposals to increase disability reviews or to sidestep administrative law justices. Now, that's important that putting the riders on because the bill, this appropriations bill, to fund the government is coming to a head on December 11th. So that could determine whether or not the government will shut down during a pandemic. And, and I don't have to tell you how disastrous that would be. Now, that said, that might actually give Republicans much more leverage because Republicans don't care if the government shuts down. They don't care if people don't, you know, die. <laughs> During it. I, again, you've seen the Republicans in action during coronavirus. Mitch McConnell continues to block uh, any sort of coronavirus deal with the Democrats. Uh, all they're doing is pushing $500 billion skinny bills, which address maybe one thing at a time, and most of it's corporate giveaways. 
essentially. Uh, and so we've seen that. Uh, and so I am kind of worried that Republicans just be like, no, nah, no, we're, you know, get, no, give us social security cuts or we're going to shut down the government. Now, the one thing that is in the uh, benefits of the Democrats is that, well, that's going to disrupt the markets. And that's the one thing both parties care about more than anything is making sure the markets are stable. And so a government shutdown would kind of destroy that as well. Um, and so it could go either way. I really hope the Democrats will continue to uh, at least oppose these cuts and to try to stay strong on this and to not give the Republicans an inch. But that said, um, if these if these do end up getting, you know, uh, passed, rammed through, um, well, that's just going to end up leaving a legacy of hurting regular people. And that's completely on brand for the Trump White House, who's uh, just trying to burn the house down. If they can't have it, nobody can. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.